Oh, hey, hi guys. What is this? What is this here? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sometimes I forget how small these cars are. <laughs> Anyways, let's go outside and talk. Okay, that's better. So, uh, welcome to another episode, 1966 Rusty Beauty, our GD6. So, uh, in the last episode, we pretty much assembled this part of the floor here. Everything is tucked in place and it doesn't look bad. So I'm happy with our progress so far, but I think we're gonna stop working on this because I'm afraid that we might make a major mistake without the seal and then we're gonna have to correct lots of things. So I'm happy that we built the parts, but I'm not gonna weld them permanently. Uh, our seal is on its way. Soon it's gonna be here. Or in the next few days, it's gonna be here. So we're gonna come back to this. But in the meantime, we can't stop working, right? So I think we're gonna do something else in today's episode. And that's this part of the car here, the rear fender. So somebody repaired it already, so we can just apply some body filler and it's gonna be fine, right? <laughs> no, we're gonna take everything out as we did on the other side. We're gonna repair the inner structure here, the inner fender they call it. And then we're gonna put our new piece on top. I think the repair goes a little bit too high here, higher than the other side. On the other side, we actually replaced the whole wheel arch. So we will see this new panel that comes here. So we'll see how we're gonna determine how high we need to put it. Well, we have another GT6 here, we have the Spitfire, we have the other side that we already made. Maybe we should go by the other side, because if that's wrong, this one needs to be wrong too, you know? <laughs> that's where we're gonna focus our attention today. So, without further ado, let's get crack -a locking <sighs> Look at that. <laughs> they built the entire structure inside. That was, I don't know how it was working together, but underneath, outside, everywhere. And then they just put a lot of fiberglass and body filler and whatever. But now we are back to original metal or what's left of it. So now we can start assessing and deciding where and what to cut and how to go with this. This we don't need anymore, the finisher piece. I think the first thing that we have to do is clean this up a little bit here and here on this end and position our repair panel where it is gonna be and mount it with clicos and that way we can always refer all the other parts that we're gonna have there inside to this panel. It is a little bit tricky, but we're gonna figure it out because we can position it like this, we can position it like this, you know what I mean? To position it properly, I think I'm gonna go around my GT6 and my Spitfire and measure the distance, like the round distance from here to here. Like how long is this piece? I even have the new finisher piece here, but I don't trust it, it's aftermarket part and I will see the average. My Spitfire might not be correct. The GT6 is probably correct because there we replaced this panel on one side, but not on the other. So I'm gonna measure the distance on all of them and see what it should be from here, going around the curve to here. And then we will know exactly where this end is gonna be. Once we know this position, then it's easy. We're gonna clamp this side and this side we can play with and find in which position our wheel arch is gonna look best and that's gonna be it. And then we can go and confirm, for example, a vertical line from here to here and do other things 
But I think, first of all, we should work in my way, because even if it is wrong, it is what's going to look best. So let me go around and take some measurements, and I'll be back. All right, so that's interesting. I went and I measured my GT6, but it is irrelevant because the back of my GT6 is different. You know, it has the, it's Mark III, so it's totally different. So it's irrelevant, but it measures 18, just so you know, it measures 18 inches from the top of this uh, seam, I should call it, to the wheel arch. My Spitfire on both sides, which is surprising, measures 21 inches. And the other side of this one measures 21 and 3 eighths. So 3 eighths more than my Spitfire. So I don't know which one is correct because the Spitfire has been done by somebody else before me. I've just done a little bit of bodywork there. This one I've done, but I don't know whether it's correct or not, but it is within 3 eighths. We are within 3 eighths, which is good. So I decided to take the finisher pieces that we bought for this car. And it turns out they measure 18 inches. And that makes me think that these are for uh, GT6 Mark III and not for the round back. This is not a big deal. When the time comes, we can bend the piece and just extend them. They're like just a U channel, you know? So we can bend the piece and extend them, but they are not relevant again for our situation here. So anyways, we're gonna have to make it the same as the other side, which is 21 and 3 eighths. This is what I used to measure. This is my sewing tape measure because <clears throat> it needs to be flexible. Not flexible, not, not stretchable, but you can measure curves like this, for example. If you use your metal uh, measuring tape, you can never measure a curve like that, right? And here you can measure it precisely. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this here, how much this is, and we're gonna subtract that from 21 and 3 eighths. And that's gonna be our height here where we need to position it. So that's 17 and 1 eighth. So we need another four and a quarter inches to get to, set to 21 and 3 eighths, right? So four and a quarter from here down is where our panel needs to go. So we said four and a quarter. Okay. Let me clean this first. Note to self, if you want your mark to stay, first de-rust and then mark, not the other way around. Okay, so now here, there's not much that can go wrong. I'm pretty sure it is somewhere here, but we're gonna measure from here to here and compare it to the other side, just to make sure that they are the same. 19 and 3 eighths. Okay, so here, of course, we have to measure around the curve and this is overlapping too high, so it's gonna affect a little bit. Uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to be that much. So I measured from this corner here to this corner here, and it was 19 and 3 eighths, just like this, in a vertical line. And here we are, 19 and 5 eighths. So I guess if this gets pushed in, the curve is gonna become smaller and it's gonna reduce by quarter inch or not. But also, that's important, where do you measure? Do you measure here or here? Okay. <laughs> All right, so 11 and a half from the end. So right here is where on the other side it measures 18 and 3 eighths from the bottom. And here it measures exactly this much. Here you see, if we put that at the flange, all the way to here, it's 11, it's 19 and 3 eighths. Perfect. And I know you're gonna say that this is not flat here, but I believe that this should come out, not this. This is not gonna go in. 
it's going to go maybe a little bit in, but you know what? For that much, even my grandma is going to move in her grave. Okay, so let's cut off what we don't need so we can position this properly. I'm going to overlap them. I think it is best if we overlap them. Like, I always prefer butt welding, but it makes it so much more uh, solid and straight when you overlap them, like you do a juggle weld. And then we're going to seam seal it inside, so it should be fine. On the other side, we did the butt weld, so I don't know, we will see. I had troubles welding the other side because this metal, for whatever reason, doesn't weld very well. I cleaned up the paint from where I was welding, of course, and still it didn't weld very well. So we will see here, maybe we're going to do a jog weld, but in any case, we're going to cut it here, at this line. I'm going to cut this panel, but at this line. So now that we marked it, we're going to take this panel off and we're going to mark the other line. <laughs> What did we say? First clean and then mark? Eh. Denmark. Hello, people from Denmark. I know it's different. For me, the and the are the same thing. The same thing, you see? Because of my accent. Anyways, so let's mark that. problem here is with the inner fender here, the rust goes a little bit higher than the other side. The other side was somewhere here, so it was easy to repair this part. But that's fine. If we have to do some repairs from inside, we're going to do it from inside. But before we do this, we're going to have to repair the floor. If you haven't seen the other side, we first fixed the floor inside, made sure that we have the floor coming out all the way with the flange that goes down. We repaired this part here, we repaired even a little bit here, I believe, on the valance. And then we went from there. So now here, all I want to keep now here from this is the inner structure here, because we're going to have to make the same shape, more or less. So that's why I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to get rid of this so I can see a little bit better here. Of course, later we're going to cut much higher. Here also we need to repair the wheel well, which I don't remember if we had done on the other side. You know what, it's not a bad idea if I go and watch my own video and see what I've done on the other side to help me a little bit with uh, the decision making. There's still more of this. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Like I wasn't clear about this area here, uh, how I did it on the other side. I totally forgot, but um, like I can cut, let's say, this much off. And that's going to give me possibility to repair this panel behind and etc, etc. So... So I might cut this panel here, focus on this area, repair all this, and then we can make a separate repair here, we will see how far we're gonna go because I see the flange of the inner wheel well is also rotten here. So we will see how far it is rotten. It definitely feels nice and clean, but we will see about that. I don't wanna go too far now. I wanna focus on the, this area. So we're gonna repair only the bottom here. I can actually cut it now. <laughs> All right, so now I trimmed the inner fender as high as I can go to solid metal. The rest we're not going to disturb, I guess. Maybe just this piece we're going to cut off, but we'll see. I can cut it easily back to wherever there's solid metal, but I want first to position this repair panel here so we can have a reference for how far this needs to go, the floor, because it needs to align with this panel. I know we've done that on the other side and I'm probably going into too much detail, but 
I'm pretty sure that there are people that came later during the process, so that's for them. I'm sorry guys if you've seen that before, but that's how it is. So the floor needs to come out and has a drop down at the end. It has a flange going down and this flange aligns with this inner structure, inner fender they call it. So it goes down and the two align together. And then this panel comes as a third layer and meets them there in the same place like this. So based on this, we're going to figure out how far the floor is going to come out and where the drop is going to be. That's why I'm going to mount it with Clico now so we can put it on and off and keep checking our floor. Now this line looks like we need to cut this a little bit higher here. Well, it looks like I didn't mark it properly because now, if you look, the black line is absolutely parallel to our line here. Okay, to repair this piece now, this corner, um, looks like the metal here is pretty solid. The problem is though, this flange, because it was inside this finisher piece, look, the entire flange, all the way up to here, is pretty pitted. I wouldn't keep it. I think from here, all the way to the bottom, we can make a new piece, and not only the flange, but of course, we're gonna cut a little bit of the valance here, but I'm gonna keep it as short as possible. Here at the bottom, of course, we're gonna make it wider to, to reach up there. But here at the top, I'm going to keep this piece that we're going to replace as short as possible because the farther we go from the edge, the longer the piece becomes. So we need to stretch a lot here, which now with the English wheel, we should be able to, but we don't need to. So I think I'm going to cut like half inch flange from here all the way to somewhere here. And then at the bottom, we're going to make it wider, of course to cover this. So I'm gonna try to make the part first, put it here and then mark it and cut this based on our repair piece. So this is the part that we want to replace, right? With this flange and this flange. And the problem is that this flange is curved and this flange is also curved and this part is curved. So it's not a flat piece because if we put a flat piece like this, flat piece of metal, and we push it down in the corner here of the flange, here it opens because it is touching here, right? It's touching here in the middle and it here it opens. If we push this down, it opens here. So in this area right here, we need to stretch the metal. We'll, I wanna make the flanges first and then start stretching them so they can curve. But in the meantime, I want this part to stretch a little bit too to create this bubble here. So I think we can do that on the planishing hammer. All right, so this is our piece and you know, we need to curve it this way first. This flange needs to be curved this way and this flange needs to be curved a little bit this way. So that's what we're gonna do now. First on the stretcher, we're gonna start stretching it to match it more or less with the shape on the car like a little bit roughly and this shape we can also confirm with this shape it needs to be something like that and I think we went too far didn't we no because it starts somewhere here I need to mark here where this flange needs to end and I'm gonna do that on the car. There you go. So this is where this flange needs to end, like this. So this is our shape. So huh, 
I didn't do a good job. So we can stretch more here, but we need to shrink here up above like this. Okay, that's more or less the shape. So we need this area here to be stretched so it can allow this to bend. You know what I mean? Because this now is gonna touch here. So you see, if I put it like this, now, this is my pivoting point for in all directions. So we're gonna have to stretch this so it can come out a little. And to stretch this area, we can use the planishing hammer actually. This has a smaller crown. We're gonna put this die. I have a flat one here, which I made on the lathe. It, it had a little crown before, but I turned it on the lathe a little bit to make it flat so I can use the planishing hammer for flattening metal. But now we can use this die. And because it has a crown, every time it hits, it's gonna stretch a little bit the metal and it's gonna give it this shape. Let's see. The problem is I can't go further than this point. Mm, I don't like that. But you see it already started bending it up. I can remove this rubber for now. And that allows me to go a little bit further, but not much. See, it already curved it a little bit this way and a little bit in that way. I think we're doing well. This flange at the end of the day is gonna have to bend a lot more because you know this piece goes into the corner and this flange comes this way. But uh, for now I'm keeping it so I can reach as far as I can here. Now I can bend this more. I think that's how this curve goes. Okay, now we have to bend this flange more because it won't fit. I'm gonna do that manually. All right, so that's how it fits. I'm trying to do it one-handed here. It's almost there. Now, the only problem is that we overstretched here in one point because I wanted to go in the corner, but I couldn't reach. So I'm gonna try to do that manually because now this is, you see here, it's too deep and at the end there's nothing. So I'm gonna try to do that manually somehow on the bench. Other than that, it's pretty good, isn't it? Of course, again, we're gonna trim it. We're not, we don't need it that big. So I'm not worried about this area here a lot. We're gonna. Why are you laughing at my gloves? Well, they're really solid on this side. So I like these. I like them here. So about this, I don't care. As long as they protect my hands here. So don't laugh at them. They're really good gloves, actually. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Um, somehow, uh, probably because we couldn't stretch enough here it pulled in a little bit. But on this side, it matches the curve pretty well. So, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go in on the shrinker now, on the shrinker stretcher. We're gonna stretch a little bit more here, so we can tuck it in, because you see, here it's not tucked in all the way. Okay, that's much better now. It came close here. So this flange at the end is gonna need to be pushed a little bit more that way. But I'm not gonna push it now because you see now it, it goes out and then in, but that's not because we have a curved line. It's because this flange is pushed out, needs to be straightened here. 
and this is with this panel installed with clicos so we can confirm that it is in the right place and i already marked it here and now i'm gonna take it out and cut it okay it's all clamped and just here at the top the gap is a little bit too big but the rest i think it's perfect and i'm gonna weld it it's all welded now let's see how we're gonna grind it didn't give myself too much room here did i all right so it's all welded and ground and that's where we're gonna leave it probably it needs a little bit more attention on grinding but we're gonna do that when we work on the rest of the valves because you see it has some more issues here <laughs> probably we're gonna need to replace the whole entire bottom of the valves maybe inch and a half to two we will see when the time comes for now all we needed was this flange here so we can start working on the rest of the floor here and the inner fender uh, the floor i cleaned up a little bit inside and i'm surprised it doesn't look too bad i can actually only repair here the end like an inch or something a flange at the end with a drop down and then from here we can come this way and this way and all the way to wherever we need to go we're not gonna disturb the rib because this, yeah it has a hole but this hole is a rivet hole so we're just gonna weld it and that's it here this uh, part of the wheel well needs a little bit of attention here this is what i'm talking about it's a very small repair that it needs but we're gonna cut it because i'm gonna have to cut the floor anyways somewhere here so we're gonna cut a square piece uh, together with this flange which flange is bent actually we're gonna repair it and then we're gonna start from there the floor with its drop down here etc etc until it leads until it comes here and again it has another drop so let me take the grinder and go to town and yes i cut this a little bit too short this flange i should have left it a little bit longer but anyways the floor drop we're gonna leave longer to match this line and then uh, here we are either gonna put a piece of metal on the other side or we're gonna just build weld here to make it nice and smooth with this but again that's gonna happen when we work on this part okay so the floor is cut and now we are back to solid metal all over the place and I cut this piece out of here and now we can make a repair patch for here repair this piece first and then we're gonna start making the floor with the drop at the end all right so I made this patch and I just started cleaning the edges of the old metal so I can weld it and I figured that we have another problem here <laughs> so I need to go even higher so so before I weld this, I need to cut up there and weld that as well. Here underneath, I made this flange, which I'm gonna shorten later, but initially I'm gonna weld it like this. Now actually, I started going up and the higher I go, the more holes I find. And there's been some body filler here so somebody's been here before and you know what i'm just gonna leave it i'm gonna take care of this repair because again i'm getting distracted with other repairs we need to finish this one first this i can repair from inside even or when i flip the car you see here that's where this repair is so something has been done there and you know what i'm not gonna worry about it right now I can repair it from here, from inside, later. All right, so I welded it, but you see at the top there, <laughs> I can't even weld it because it's so thin, the metal. So like I said, we're gonna leave that repair for later. It's important that we have this now here, even the flange underneath is welded. All right, so now we have to extend the floor from 
where we cut it to this flange, to this flange and this flange. So this is where it needs to end. And to make my life easier, I made a template of the profile. So that's the template. So the floor makes this curve here, goes down, and it has a drop on this side that matches this flange and it has a drop of this on this side. <laughs> like this is too short, but we're gonna have to make it like half an inch. So it fits inside here. So when it comes here, we can spot weld it, hopefully, if our spot welder fits there. So this is our piece and we're gonna have to bend it with this shape. This is the, the drop for the outside. So this is where that's gonna be in. These holes are gonna fall off we're gonna have to cut it something like this, I guess. And we're gonna have a bend here and a bend here somewhere. So the holes there are not a problem. So we're gonna start here. We need a lot more here. I think that's good. Okay, it's not perfect, but it is somewhere there. You see this crack, like I went too much in the same spot and it cracked in two places, but we can weld that, not a problem. So now this part, this side matches more or less this curve, but here you see that we are too far. So we just need to Okay, that's more or less what we want. So now let's mark where we need to bend the flanges. Okay. Right. I don't know if we filmed something before, but if we haven't, turned out that we were a little bit too short, so I straightened this flange here and I bent it a little bit further out, which left us with a little bit shorter flange, but that's fine. But now we're almost there. Now it looks like I can move a little bit more this way, but I'm gonna need to cut this part because now the flanges are overlapping there at the end. Okay, now this allows me to move a little bit more and now we are almost there. We need to adjust this shape to match that shape, but I don't know if you heard that it's dinner. <laughs> so I'm going for my dinner and maybe we're gonna continue tomorrow. I don't know if I'm gonna come back after dinner. We'll see. Well, I decided not to go back after dinner. And since we have a little interruption here, I think it's a good spot to end our video because I thought I was gonna have this entire corner uh, fitted in one video, but it looks like, what are we at? We are at 33 minutes now, 33 minutes and a half. So by the time I say goodbye, it's gonna be 35. <laughs> I thought I wasn't gonna do this side of the car so detailed, like I wasn't gonna film it so detailed, but I ended up doing it anyway. It's because who I am. <laughs> I just go into way too many details. But anyways, I'm sure that there are people who joined us after we've done the, um, the other side, so maybe it's interesting for them. Um, anyways, whether you like it or not, it's up there. You wanna watch it, watch it. If you don't, you don't need to. <laughs> Anyway, so that's gonna be it for today's video guys. I thank you for watching, for commenting and subscribing, for supporting the channel on Patreon and via PayPal. Um, I really appreciate you doing that without any additional benefits that I don't provide to my Patreons because I don't want to take away 
anything from the other people. So don't take it as I don't want to give out anything. Take it as I, I already gave out anything. If I have to give some people exceptional content or VIP content, this means that I have to uh, block some videos from some people and I don't want to do that. Whether you support me financially or not, you have access to everything. So with that said, guys, if you want to support me financially, if you're not Patreon yet, you can go down the, in the description and find the link to my Patreon page and uh, you will find there some ways to support me. Or if you don't want to go through Patreon, you just want to do a one-time donation, you can do that by sending a PayPal transfer to elin.yakov at trustybeauties.com or you can send also a e-transfer if you're in Canada. But again, you don't need to do that in order to get access to everything. You have access to everything already at the same time that everybody has it. So if you decide to support me, that would be just because you feel like saying thank you and that's all. But anyways, I want to say thank you guys. I really appreciate you being here, uh, commenting, watching, subscribing and supporting me. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.